Hey friends, welcome to my garden. Right now, it's the last week of June and things are really getting big. And I'm really excited to share with you some of my favorite vegetables that I'm growing, the recent addition that I just put on my garden, and a couple of improvements that I'm gonna to make to my garden for next growing season. So I hope you're excited for my garden tour. I'm really excited to show you all of my hard work. So let's check it out. All right, guys, let's come on into my garden. Over here to the side, I have some potted plants. You know, I want to use every bit of room I can in my fenced in garden area because we get a lot of deer and rabbits and other little critters that come around. So it's great to have things fenced in and protected. Really love these foxglove flowers. I haven't figured out where I want to plant them in my yard yet. So right now, just keeping them in the pot and the bees love them. They're visiting them and they go right up inside those flowers. It's so fun to watch. It's cilantro and basil growing and I had some extra onions so I put them in a pot and here's our fig tree. I had to move them out of the corner of my garden to a more sunny spot because it just wasn't growing well. The back corner which I'll show you later in this video uh, it doesn't get as much sun exposure as I would like but he's really taken off now since we've moved him. Uh, to a better spot and with some more sun. Right here we have some bok choy. Been growing a lot of that this year and harvesting it. And yeah, I just keep cutting pieces off and letting it grow back. And you know, it's starting to bolt a little bit now because we're in the end of June in New York and things are starting to get a little hot. Really like it, gonna be a staple in the garden. Another crop that I plan on having as a staple in my garden is mustard greens. This variety is called Giant Red and it's really fun. These leaves get really big and beautiful and saute them up with a little garlic and oil and they're delicious. All right, next I have my rainbow Swiss chard which is looking pretty good. Getting a couple holes in them from the bugs. So I'm gonna have to start harvesting and eating what I can before the bugs get to them. That's always gonna be an issue in the garden. The bugs are gonna eat some of them and you kind of have to just eat it before they do. All right, next we've got some kale. Really like to either make kale chips with this or a kale and red cabbage coleslaw. Next we have broccoli. Never grown broccoli before, so we're gonna see how it comes out, but it looks look, looking good. And my daughter loves to eat a lot of broccoli, so I decided to give it a shot this year and see what happens. Over here we have some squash plants, acorn squash and butternut squash. It didn't have a lot of success growing this last year because I planted it a little late in the season, but this year they look like they're doing really well and I'm excited to see what happens. We've been eating a ton of these guys. These are called sugar snap peas and they get pretty tall. We could probably do some improvements on the trellising. Maybe a straighter trellis for these would work and maybe a foot taller. We're eating a ton of these right now. They're delicious. We're so lucky to be getting all these fresh vegetables right now. Down here we got our peas. This guy's getting a little fat, so I think I'm gonna pick him. Pick him right now. A little fatter than you want your peas to get. Um, these are different than the sugar snap peas where we just eat the peas that are in the inside. Let me see, I'll open one up for us real quick. So we just eat the peas that are inside, pop them out one by one, and they're really sweet. Whereas the sugar snap peas, rip the tips off of these and we eat them whole or chop them up. Next we got string beans. These are the bush variety and finally starting to take off. 
starting to see some buds over here. This one over here is starting to flower a little bit and they're gonna have some awesome string beans growing. Really like string beans with some hummus or chopped up in a stir fry or just sauteed with a little oil and garlic. Next is a variety of flowers we planted called Sweet Alyssum, just to attract some beneficials and some pollinators to the garden. And this is some more bok choy. And right here we got our carrots. Planted a ton of basil here. I usually grow basil indoors in my uh, basement in my aero garden but this time of year I'm growing less in the basement and more outdoors and then when the weather changes I will grow more in the basement here we have some radishes this is actually my second crop that I planted of radishes I already harvested a bunch of radishes earlier in the season and over here I had an extra pepper plant I didn't have a place for it, so I just stuck it over here where I had some room. We're getting excited about these guys here. These flowers are called zinnias, and they're gonna be beautiful and attract a lot of pollinators, but I just love to see the heads of them. Starting to see some color, and they're gonna open up and I can't wait to update you what this looks like in a month from now when everything's in full bloom. These big guys right here are zucchini plants. They look so cool with their big leaves. They also have some beautiful yellow flowers that are awesome to look at and are edible as well. That's falling over. I think you need some... some might need some, uh, a little help here. All right, there we go. All right, my sweet potatoes are starting to spread a little. These, from what I heard, sweet potatoes can grow up to 20 feet long if you let them. So I'm giving them lots of space to grow out. Over here, I have some other flowers. They are called. These are called salvia. I wish I would have started them sooner indoors and let them get a little bigger. Next year, I will start them earlier, let them get nice and big before I put them out. This is my first year growing sunflowers and I was surprised how big these guys are getting. All I did was take some of the seeds that I usually use for my microgreens. I grow sunflower microgreens in my basement and if you click the link above, I made a video about how to do that. Just put a couple seeds that I would have used for microgreens in the ground to see what happens. And these guys are getting huge. Right here we have our pole beans, which was a big producer for us last year. And I planted more plants and I like what I did with the trellising. This thing might get pretty crowded really soon with the amount of plants I planted, but we'll see what happens. And it's all a big experiment for me try it out and see what happens and make adjustments next year all right next moving on to my tomato plants planted four different varieties of plants this year one type is a determinate type which I don't prune I'm just gonna let grow and do what it wants to do and then the other types are indeterminate which will get heavily pruned and are gonna continue to grow pretty long all year. This type of trellising that I'm using, I'm not a big fan of it for tomatoes. And that's one of the things that I'm gonna change next year, but I'm making the best out of it this year. What I don't like about it is that these plants grow so fast and aggressive that they sort of get trapped underneath the plastic. And it's pretty hard to move them around and through this plastic. So right now I'm just sort of cutting it and dealing with it. Next year, I'm just gonna build a trellis with one string for them to climb instead of a net for them to climb. But man, they're looking awesome, big, and starting to flower. We're gonna be rolling in tomatoes. Last year, I only grew 
cherry tomatoes. This year I'm growing plum and cherry and on the vine size as well. And the lettuce looks so cool. This uh, Salanova, love the colors. Have some romaine going as well. And we've been harvesting a lot of this and eating it. It's been delicious. And this variety back here is doing pretty well too. It's called Black Seeded Simpson. First time ever growing onions. They're getting pretty big. These guys down here are gonna be watermelons. I uh, hope they have enough room. I tried to squeeze them in with my trellis cucumbers. I'm really looking forward to the cucumbers here. They're gonna fill out this trellis. Hopefully it'll hold all the weight. Might have to reinforce it, but we'll see what happens. But the watermelons is the first for me this year. I did pretty well with cucumbers last year and I'm trying a few different varieties of mini cucumbers and some larger sizes as well. Oh, I'm starting to get, starting to get a flower down there. That's exciting to see. All right, next we have my peppers. I've grown four varieties of peppers this year. Really excited about the lunchbox side, which are mini red peppers. This is gonna be celery. And we have some more of those cool looking zinnias. These are one of the coolest looking plants in the garden right now. This is Brussels sprouts. And it's so fun to look at how big these leaves are getting. I mean, look at the size of this compared to my hand. I almost want to do some research on if uh, these leaves are edible because they're so big and they look like they'd be tasty sauteed up or something or in a, in a slaw or something. But we want some Brussels sprouts, so we just let it keep growing until it gives us some of those. Over here, we have my asparagus. If you let your asparagus grow, this is what they start to look like. Asparagus takes a, a little time to get established and I just planted it early this year. Oh, here's one that didn't start to turn into like a fern yet. But right now they're just long and skinny and getting established. And it takes one to two years of growing like this before you're going to get consistent harvests. But once it's established, I'm gonna be eating asparagus for the next 10 years in this little patch. Raspberry plants are starting to look awesome. I have four different varieties growing. The varieties that I'm growing are called Caroline, Double Gold, Anne, and Heritage. Back here is that corner of the garden that I was talking about earlier in the video that I had to move my fig tree from. It doesn't get as much sun exposure as the rest of my garden, so I'm not sure how well things are gonna grow, but I'm trying to grow some blackberry plants back here. The variety of blackberries that I'm trying to grow are called Prime Arc Freedom. Excited to see how these guys turn out. I hear they get big and they're thornless. I wanna grow as many berries as I can. I painted a rock to look like a sun and put it back here just to help these guys out. So help them out, buddy. Last year, outside of the fence, we planted a bunch of flowers just to make it look a little pretty. But this year I'm experimenting with growing a little more food out here. So I built these beds just out of some stone that I had laying around. This is actually fake stone that people use for landscaping around their trees. It's, uh, they're connected in pieces of three or four, but they look pretty real and they do a great job for making raised beds. And I put some of my critter fence around it to keep the critters off. And I'm also going to put something on the top to also help keep the animals out, either some insect netting or some more of this critter fencing. But we're excited, we bought some strawberries. Starting to see some flowers already on the strawberries. Over here, this bed I made out of real stones that I had just laying around. I don't wanna spend money on things that I could just use 
from nature or from what I already have. Just like I did over here. I had a couple logs that I would have burned, but figured I'd just make a raised bed out of them instead. Wow, guys, that was awesome. I had a great time showing you all of my hard work in my garden. It's getting really hot, so I'm gonna have to water the garden and myself. If you like what you saw in that video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I love making videos about the food I grow and the food I cook in my home for myself and my family. Stay healthy, friends.